Champion everyone. In this video I'm going to teach you how to uh, program a 4 to 20 milliamp input. Uh, these inputs are being increasingly popular given the uh, wide selection of 4 to 20 milliamp capable uh, specialty sensors and, uh, and control systems. So what we are able to do is bring any 4 to 20 milliamp input in and of course if you're on Web Advantage then uh, you can get a, a running history of, of all of those uh, other sensors and, and inputs as well. So from the main run screen, you're going to hit Setup Run. And first things first, when you get your uh, unit, uh, you want to go into Customize. You want to go into Milliamp In, number 9, and choose your input. And go Input 1. So here is where you can customize and give your input a name. So if you're hooking up a corrosion monitor, you can name it corrosion rate or name it the metal that you want. Or if you're looking at pressure or uh, a fluorometer, uh, anything, whatever you're looking at, you can name it there. So on the controller, you look and, and see exactly, know exactly what that input is. Once you give it a name, you can give it, change its units. So if you're looking at milliamps or milligrams per liter or liters there's all kinds of selections PSI PPM mils per year PPB right now I'm going to stick with milliamps and then you can give it a number value so do I want whole numbers do I want a whole number in three uh, three decimals and this a lot of times uh, is based on what you're bringing into the unit so whatever sensor you're doing will usually provide you with the range that it's good at and uh, and the uh, uh, measurement so you, you would look kind of refer to your uh, to your product manual of whatever you're connecting to, to know what that proper number format is so once you've got this set then, you can hit home. And now you're going to go into calibration. Milliamp in. Input one. So here is a screen. This is where you're going to set your min and your max or your total range. So if, if your sensor that you've got, say it's a pressure transducer, it's a zero to a hundred PSI pressure transducer, for instance. Your max here would be 100, and your min here would be 0. And again, this all depends on what your, uh, your product range is. So once you've got your max and your min set, and we've gone into Customize, so you have now hit the Home button, go into Set Points, choose milliamp input and input one or whatever input again you're working on now we've got all of our ranges set in our what what we're calling it and our decimal levels so you you see the set point screen looks very similar if not exactly the same as a, a, a setting up your set point for conductivity or pH we try to keep it uh, kind of the same so you've got your summary screen here where you can see your set point, your differential, high and low alarms, a limit timer, and if you've got a disabler used. Now this is important. Disablers are very important for milliamp inputs because the flow switch does not automatically disable your milliamp input. Uh, simply because it's not tied to that specific system, it could be some independent thing. So once you've got your set point set up, in which case you would just go into set points, just like conductivity, choose a set point, input what your set point's going to be, and hit enter. You can work your way down through differential, high alarm, low alarm, limit time. There's also a disabler option on the excess, uh, but on the uh, full size Megatron, I will show you in the menu how to go in and do this. But you can come in right in here and say, I want to disable based on any of my drum level inputs or digital inputs or a no flow alarm. So I want to disable that feed based on no flow because I don't want to feed chemical or whatever I'm doing if there's no flow in the system. Now again, you don't have to select the disabler, but this is, this is important to know 
Uh, if you hook up, say, a fluorometer and you're feeding chemical based off of it, if you don't go in and tell it to shut off when there's no flow, it won't. It will continue running. So from this milliamp input one set point screen, you see all your settings. And that's essentially how you program your set point. Now you want to go to home. And as I said, if you're on a unit that doesn't have that disabler option, an older firmware version or, or a full-size Megatron, instead of setting that disabler in your set points, you'll come back out and go to configure. You want to go to relays. And you really need to do this anyways because you've got to tell the unit what relay is activating based off of that input. So we'll choose relay 2. I want my main action on this relay to be milliamp input 1. You see there's a ton of options here. milliamp in one not high or low or limit just milliamp in one hit enter so now my main action is that I want to come over to disable one and tell it I'm being disabled based off of a no flow enter so now you see my unit is showing no flow right now and it's saying hey I'm disabling I'm on right now once you've set your relays up that is essentially all you have to do in order to uh, set your 4 to 20 milliamp input programming uh, if you get stuck please call us at 800-743-7431 our customer service department will be happy to walk you through anything you need us to uh, thank you for your purchase and have a great day